Hello everyone. Well, this has to be the smallest box I've ever seen a Hoover Junior packed in. Sometimes I get vacuum cleaners sent to me completely assembled when it would have just taken a few screws to undo and it would have fitted into a much smaller box. And I've got an example of that coming up. You might have seen it already. You might be seeing it next. I don't know. But anyway, I haven't opened it yet. It's in the living room as I speak. So we go from a very, very small box, in fact, possibly even a bit too small, but hopefully this Hoover Dirt Searcher has survived because really it is a very, very small box and I would have liked a little bit of packaging around it. But anyway, they're fairly robust, the old Hoovers. So fingers crossed. And I know this particular seller has sold quite a few and according to his eBay this seller is a retired Hoover engineer and he's been selling a few older Hoover cleaners that he's refurbished himself and uh, I know it's been desuppressed so there should be no surprises when we switch it on but it'd be interesting to see what a retired Hoover service engineer does with a, an old Hoover must be a nice little hobby for him, I was thinking, in retirement, and quite lucrative, because uh, I think he makes quite a decent profit. Right. He's put a lot of black tape on, I know that. <laughs> right, there we are. Ooh, crikey. Now, let's have a look. We do have a spare bulb, which is nice. A couple of spare belts. And a couple of spare non-genuine bags, but, uh, you know, the genuine ones aren't too great anyway. Right, we've got the handle, or handles. Oh, it's not even taken off. That's surprising. Thought you have removed the bag from the cleaner. A mm, little bit of oil in the box. I hope it's, it's not going to go on my carpet. Right. Oh dearie me, looks like I'm going to have to get my scissors out. Let's hope the front lens portion is uh, okay. This is a dirt search, I said, so it has a headlamp. Will date, yeah, mm, need, <laughs> needs retro brighting for sure. And it's clean enough anyway, as I'd expect it to be. A refurbished vacuum shouldn't have any dirt in it. But it certainly needs a bit of finesse. Let me have a look. Mm. Tea cut might help. It has yellowed a bit. Not sure if we can, you can see. Can you see the yellowing? They all go yellow. Well, not all, but most. Hmm, I wonder if this... I always thought that the Dirt Searchers had the um, deluxe feature, the hook that turns down. But possibly this is an earlier one. Now these metal hooks are far stronger, of course, than the plastic ones that followed. But that's in nice, nice condition. Again, there's yellowing. Too late to retro right now, this time of year. But I have had success earlier in the year using um, some Astonish oxygen-based cleaning solution uh, for, for washing for clothes. Right, well, I'll just assemble and then we'll have a closer look at this Dirt Searcher. Well, here is the Hoover Junior Dirt Searcher or Dirt Searcher Junior assembled and ready to be plugged in. Looks pretty good. Just needs a bit of finessing for a collector. I just want to get rid of the bit of yellowing and polish her up so she is showroom shiny. But if someone wanted a Hoover Junior to use now, and there's no reason why you couldn't use a Hoover Junior now, especially on carpets, not so good on hard floors, but carpets, it's a very good carpet cleaner. If someone wanted to use a Hoover Junior, I'm sure because this one has been completely stripped down and serviced, new parts fitted where necessary, this is going to last a minimum, I mean a bare minimum, I'm sure, 
of five years and you know probably double or more years than that to be honest because things were made better back in the day and this is a British made Hoover upright and a very popular machine of its time but yes I'm sure up against some modern machines this Hoover Junior could still hold its own beating and sweeping the carpet so looks fine it's all clean but as I said I would just want to do a bit of finessing just to to get this machine looking almost factory fresh let's take a look underneath first and then we'll check the model number and hopefully there is a serial number on this machine and we can date this but this looks like an earlier version of the dirt searcher I'm sure this machine has been cleaned as per the eBay listing but I'm just going to take a little look under the cover by undoing these two screws obviously I've shown a lot of juniors on my channel and normally when I lift this cover plate there's an awful lot of fluff and dust inside and sometimes even bits of old Christmas tree but as we can see here lovely and clean and yes no suppressor so to me if a Hoover an ex Hoover engineer service engineer decides that a suppressor is best removed then who are we to argue with him because there's a debate whether you should remove the suppressor or replace it with a new one but the Hoover service engineer has removed it and I'm sure they used to do that as a matter of routine you know after the time when we didn't really need them for the job that they were intended for which was suppressing radio and TV, suppressing the cleaner from radio and TV interference or <laughs> stopping the cleaner from interfering with your radio and TV is what I should say but yes looks pretty clean and this has been used there's dust on here because the seller did test it out on carpet that feels lovely and smooth just moving the agitator with a famous it beats as it sweeps as it cleans brush roll and yes there will be a new belt fitted so yes the flash pad that might have been replaced because they do perish but that's intact so we'll pop the motor cover back do up the two screws and I'll turn the cleaner back over and we'll have a look I can see some non-matching screws there but we won't we won't fall out over that as long as this cleaner hums as sweet as she should and goes on to beat and sweep my carpet then it'll be fine I do have um, another dirt searcher but only one other dirt searcher an exclusive model which has a darker color bag and a darker color front piece a darker navy this is a much lighter blue color I wonder if this matches this mat might match my almost new in the box senior I think it's the same color scheme so it could be from the same generation so let's turn over the junior and we can carefully remove the headlights because good there is a rating sticker ah, I see a little bit of new sealant or a new seal has been put around here the other, other one has perished and you see the lens has yellowed I'm not sure about retro brighting the lens I should try that at some point but don't want to make any errors with that because they're very hard to get hold of you can see the metal fan here that provides the suction so as the motor rotates the fan the spindle via the belt removes the beats as it sweeps as it cleans agitator I must say that feels very smooth can't wait to switch this on and of course you have to make sure that the belt is on correctly I think they sometimes can work with the belt the other way around but normally it slips off pretty quickly okay let's have a quick look at the rating sticker this is model 1354A it's 240 volts 50 to 60 Hertz 275 watts it's double insulated serial number is 1354304 33404 
trademarks of Hoover Limited made by Hoover Limited Great Britain. So the model is 1354 and 3 denotes the year and I think 04 is the month. So this is from April and 3 is 1973 because this is too early to be an 83 model and uh, too late to be 63. So this is definitely from 1973. Right, I'll just put the cover back on. Now the cover would have been removed to use the cleaning tools for this machine, just like any other junior of this type. You'd fit the converter, which would rotate the belt off the spindle, and then you'd plug the hose in. I do have at least one toolkit that fits this. I'm to be careful with that. Oh, I just heard a crack. Got to be so careful. There we go. At the side here we've got Hoover's height right control. So it's set for high pile carpet at the moment. I might leave it on that. And then we've got medium, pile, low and shorter pile. So for most of my house, probably the low or the one up from low. But I think I'll start off anyway for this particular carpet in my living room. I'll start it off on the highest setting. That might be too high. I might have to go down a notch. On the other side, we've got the foot operated on off switch, which has always reminded me of a Rolo suite, put in red. And then towards the back, we've got the foot operated handle release. It's in the operating position at the moment, and it does stay in that position, which is good because if you need to lift the machine up over carpet fringes you can do that and then you press it again for cleaning under low furniture and of course all the way up to the top for storage and when you're carrying your dirt searcher up the stairs so here's the plasticized bag which was easier to keep clean than a cloth bag you could just wipe this clean and this is bottom fill. Later juniors and dirt searchers had Hoover's top fill. So these are always a little bit messier to empty, I find. Here we have the paper bag held into place on the bag tube with this rubber band, which I think is the same size as the agitator belt on this machine. And here we've got the bellows that connect the bag and bag tube to the machine itself. All pretty simple. Pop the bag back in. Do the zip up. Or do it down, whatever. <laughs> up or down. Down to close, up to open. Okie dokie, I think it's time we plugged in this Hoover Junior Dirt Searcher. I just need to unravel the cord and I'm going to be brave and plug it in and switch on. We know it doesn't have the suppressor in so it shouldn't blow up. Quite a short mains cable but that's uh, pretty standard for this era. Plug in. Right. Might switch on. Nope. Hopefully it will switch on. When I press the foot switch.
There's certainly nothing wrong with the sound of this almost 50 year old vacuum cleaner. She's still beating, sweeping and cleaning. And what vacuum cleaner made today can you think will be working in 50 years time? Now, obviously she's had a bit of a refurb, maybe a few new parts, but this was from the era where people used to have their appliances serviced and repaired because compared to modern appliances and the average wage, they were a lot more expensive and less disposable. So when people had one of these machines, they wanted to look after it. And as I said, some people would even pay for an annual service, but certainly when it went wrong, the normally, I'm not being sexist, but it's the time we were living in. Normally the man of the house would have a look at it, certainly put a new belt on for his lady wife maybe slot in some new brushes from time to time. And if anything else major happened, often the man of the house would tinker with the motor. If he couldn't do that, then it would be sent to someone who could. So an absolute iconic, not as iconic as like <laughs> as this constellation, you know, everyone knows this float on a constellation, but it is still, this machine would evoke many memories people of a certain age will remember their mum, grandparent or neighbours having one of these Hoover Juniors and even remember them seeing the cars being cleaned with the optional hose and accessories. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed me unboxing and having a first look at this lovely 1973 Dirt Searcher. Obviously I have a lot more vintage machines on my channel if you want to check out those. And of course, modern machines you can buy today. I also unbox and review those. So until the next time, from me and the Dirt Searcher, thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.